Frozen was a great movie, but the word is also a perfect description of how we entered the wasteland, thawed out after over 200 years, roughly, of sitting inside a cryogenic stasis pod, inside Vault 111. Well, since it's the first vault of the game, I felt it would be suitable as the first Fallout 4 lore video. Today, we shall take a look at the technology inside this vault, the vault itself, its incompetent inhabitants, and ultimately the experiment of the vault itself. Now, since the game is only out, I will give a spoiler warning here, even though it's literally one of the first areas in the game. It's like five minutes in, ten minutes into the game. Still here? Great. Let's do this. So this vault was built directly outside of the Sanctuary community. Although, as can be seen at the start of the game, not everyone was permitted entry, and the guards were quite prepared to use lethal force to keep it that way. What the criteria for selection was is unknown, but we will take a look at both it and the guards' actions later. The vault itself is quite unique in the Fall universe in that it has a descending vault door, taking its inhabitants at least 100 meters underground before you reach the vault proper. Now a rundown of what happens as we enter the vault. This is important as we are the first protagonists that actually experience vault tac lying through their teeth, right to our faces. It is also very apparent that they are trying to usher us through as quickly as possible, and telling us as little as possible. Everyone keeps telling us it will be our new home, a place where we can thrive until it's safe to leave. All a load of fucking hogwash. Then we're told to step into the decontamination pods. Now even the thickest among us could tell they were lying straight from the outset. We enter it, as does our wife and the baby Shan, and we are then frozen for centuries, completely unaware what was about to happen to us. Now we're going to talk about the procedure later, but for now, let's take a look at the vault itself. To re-enter the vault, you have to hit this big red button, and then go stand on the elevator to be lowered inside. Surprisingly enough, it does not look as bad as many of the vaults that we have seen over the course of the series. The true iconic vault door is of course present, a walkway takes you through it and across a flooded portion of the vault's entryway. Now remember, this is a vault, so everything has gone to shit. Members of the science team can be found dead here, along with the individual who led you to your cryopod and whose corpse provides us with our Pip-Boy. The vault itself looks more sophisticated than other vaults we have seen, and this is backed up by one of the science officers telling us this as we enter for the first time. A large amount of tubes and pipes thread throughout the place. These pipes no doubt supply the vault with its oxygen, and the pods with whatever gases or liquids they need to function and carry out their purpose. We then come to the pods themselves. The floor is frozen over in many places, most likely because whatever is being used to keep people in stasis is leaking. When trying to open any of the pods, via the manual release anyway, we get a warning that there's been a malfunction in the cryopod manual release override and also that there has been a critical failure in the cryogenic array. So it appears that the pods have failed, and that they can no longer be opened manually. If we look at the terminal here, we can see that the cryogenic array has failed, and that it may be the result of an isolated manual override, and a remote one. Now we know that our wife's pod was the manual one, which means that our pod opening was the remote one. Though more on that later. As a result, all the controls have been disabled, which is why the manual override no longer works on any of the other pods. These overrides seem to have also knocked out the life support as well, although what life support it could possibly have been providing is up for debate, and we will take a look at that in a moment. We then take a look at the status of each resident of the pods. The first one is empty and seems to have been the whole time. The rest of the residents that are still here all died from asphyxiation due to life support failure. That to me is really weird uh, for a few reasons. So right now we have to talk about suspended animation, and how it works. There are two types, temperature induced and chemical induced. Now based on the frozen floor, pipes leading to the pods, frosted vats of Moses knows what, I am going to say this is temperature induced. Then there's also, you know, the fact that people are literally frozen, and our paws are froze over when we entered them and we couldn't move. Now cryogenics, to sum it up, works as follows. The subject's body is cooled to the boiling point of liquid nitrogen in order to stop all biological activity. This process is usually achieved using liquid nitrogen, which would explain the frozen ground and vats connected to the pods, as well as the film of ice that forms on the windows. It's also referenced later, so this is cryostasis. This is what it's meant to be. 
Now, some of you may be thinking, won't the cells burst due to the formation of ice crystals? No, this only happens if the freezing rate exceeds the osmotic loss of water. Now, the ice can still form between cells and cause damage, and skin can be completely destroyed as well. So how does one prevent this? Using a cryoprotectant solution, the process of which is referred to as vitrification. However, these cryoprotectants are toxic in intense concentrations, and only small organisms have ever been revived using this process. So what in the fuck did vault use? This is cryostasis, and they did freeze them, but it was done without any preparation or planning, and no protectants were used. The terminals then state that everyone in the pods died from asphyxiation, so a lack of oxygen. That would suggest that they were still breathing to some extent, as life support would not be needed otherwise, as with traditional cryostasis the body should have no biological activity. This all suggests one of two things. One is that this is actually a form of induced hibernation and not total cryostasis, which would explain why they needed oxygen. Or two, this is a form of cryostasis that goes far beyond what current technology has achieved or theorized. Now onward to the rest of the vault. Other sections show signs of frost and ice, suggesting that whatever leaked out of the pipes is present throughout the entirety of the vault. Here we can find the office of the security personnel of the vault, and we can finally get some solid information on the vault provided to us by this terminal. First of all, we look at the security instructions of the vault. So right off the bat we learn that the experiment for the vault was to test the effects of suspended animation on unaware individuals. It then goes on to say that lethal force will be used on non-compliant staff by security. Because vault tech curves. Next is the operations protocol manual, which gives us three options. The first of which is resident admittance. Security was tasked with making sure personnel hadn't left the vault after the activation notice. The research staff were to stuff people into their pods and any residents that are not meant to be there were to be forcibly removed. It then says that any detainees are to be disposed of, but the vault has to remain sealed. How they did this is touched on later. Next is staff duties. The science staff were to monitor the pod residents hourly, which gives more evidence that this was not traditional cryostasis as we understand it. They were only meant to save someone if more than 80% of the pod population was already dead, though I am not sure why they chose this number. Independent research was encouraged and we see a good example of this later in the vault. The security rules were all pretty standard, although I find it odd that they had to enforce regulations from both the overseer and vault tech, as one could override the other. Maintenance are essentially told they have to do whatever tasks that the overseer assigns them. Then comes the all clear and evacuation information. The all clear message is vault way of saying, it's safe enough to leave without being killed stone dead. It then goes on to say, to ignore any messages from non vault organizations. Which may mean that Vault 111 was known to these organizations, like the military, but was either advertised as something else, or was unlawful. Which, considering the shifty shit they've pulled, would surprise me. Lastly, it says the residents are to be left in the vault. Meaning, even if everything was okay, vault wanted to finish the experiment anyway. The mandatory shelter period was the 180 day period, after which the overseer could decide to evacuate the vault. The assignment was meant to be short term, which was obviously false information. It would never have been safe to go outside after such a short period of time, and later terminal entries in the vault show that at least some people were aware of this. Then comes the security logs. The first log shows at least one of the guards had misgivings about not telling people what was happening, and that they were aware of at least the basics of the experiment. The next entry tells us that there was a divide between the scientists and the rest of the workers inside the vault. They suspect the scientists are hiding something, but still believe in a few months they can rebuild. Next, it's clear that people are beginning to become restless inside the vault, and some have begun to suspect that the all-clear signal will not come. Then they say that they know something bad is going on, but they don't know what. The second to last entry shows that the overseer is taking precautions to cut off access to the vault door, as it may be that they know people are suspicious. A meeting was being called, and folks are not happy. The last entry confirms their fears and that food is running out. They were told to hand over their weapons and food, or there would be consequences. The last paragraph says they're going to try and get out of the vault. So all of this tells us quite a bit about the experiment and the people that worked here. It's clear that all but the scientists were being kept out of the loop which most likely played a part in the fate of this vault, as, if those last entries are anything to go on, a confrontation of sorts occurred. Straight ahead we can find the recreation area slash kitchen. It seems that food and drink were left out in the open, 
and that whatever happened occurred while people were relaxing or in the middle of a meal. The employee rooms are either very bare or someone cleaned the place out, but it does look like things were moved about. So I'm going to assume the latter. To be honest, with so few possessions and space at their disposal, I can see why they were so annoyed. The terminal seems to have been used for recreational purposes, and that it's a privilege, not a right. We can find a large amount of high scores, and then we get the Pip-Boy game, Red Menace, which is based on the arcade game, Donkey Kong. I'm not very good at it. Moving through the rest of the vault, we can find the generator room, in which two are present, and I'm assuming damaged? I only assume this as arcing electricity out into an easily accessible area. It's, it's probably not an intentional design feature. The generators were most likely damaged in the mutiny that we will be talking about later. Lastly, we entered the office of the overseer, and we can gain access to his terminal entries to get more information on the vault. So the overseer's instructions are more detailed, though they are also told that the assignment is short term and that vault Tech will perform long term monitoring. It also appears the 80% number was a lie, and no life saving measures are to be taken. Also, the staff are expendable and should be exposed of in cryopods. So, yeah, most of the staff didn't know shit. His next entry is about the cryo leader, which we will come to later. It was the result of the independent research of the overseer, and he is very proud of it. We're gonna steal it later. He also seemed to think the all clear signal is coming. So, he was also in the dark as well. Now, his logs. It says that most of the residents in Sanctuary joined and the vault was ready to open. Then goes on to say how they envy the people in the pods as they get to see the future. So even at this point, they were aware of the experiment. The next entry is after the bombs hit, and some poor sod called Nord Hagen got locked out. It also appears that none of the residents suspected a thing as they were admitted to the pods. The next entry is important. It states the pod malfunctioned and the cryogenic array tried to thaw them out. He says it may be because vault remote override system, the same one that released us from our pod. But more on that later. Next, it details how they do not have enough supplies to last more than 180 days. The overseer seems to have figured out that they can't leave due to the radiation, but I don't think he knew that before the vault doors closed. The last entry is on the mutiny that occurred. The people who were meant to keep order, the security personnel, tried to leave, and still didn't know what would kill them. He puts the staff on lockdown and hoards supplies like a dragon, then makes the not really veiled threat that he will simply kill off anyone who tries to leave, so the food will last longer. The last option is to open the excavation tunnel, to leave. The overseer has the largest rooms out of anybody in the vault, which of course probably did him no favours. It's almost the same size as the employee dorm. The cryo leader is a fantastic weapon, but unfortunately it is locked behind a master lock case so you have to wait ages to open it. Or, you know, you can get dog meat, bring him down here and get him to break in. Your choice. To do this, make him go into the room the cry leader is in and then get him to find items. Then he'll break it open and you get the gun. On the point of the overseer's death, there is what looks like a bullet hole next to his head, so he may have either shot himself or someone else did. But there's no blood or gun, which I find strange. Well that is Vault. 111, a vault that uses a form of cryogenic technology that operated on the principle of freezing the individual in the pod, though how it works still remains a mystery. The vault experiment was to test the effects of long-term suspended animation on human subjects who were unaware that they were about to be frozen. Furthermore, despite information supplied to non-overseer personnel, no intervention was permitted. It could be that the pods were meant to fail over time, and the 80% number was not reached while the employees were still alive. If that is the case, then we were the last pod to be remote activated, and we survived. This false information was not the only false information supplied by vault -Tec. The all clear signal and a 180 day mandatory waiting period were also lies, to the point that the overseer himself was unaware until the vault was already sealed. In the end, it appears a mutiny killed all the employees in the vault, or starvation. It is unknown if any survived and left at this time. All we know right now, is that we are the sole survivor, the only pod inhabitant that emerged from the vault, with knowledge of the world before, embarking on our great journey into the Commonwealth.
This is the first Fallout 4 Legends video, and I thought it fitting that we did it on the first vault in the game. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give the video a like, and if you want regular updates, subscribe. Any suggestions for lore or future videos should be left in the comments below. Better yet, go on to my subreddit so we can discuss them in more detail. It's linked in the description. If you wish to, you can support me on Patreon, which is also linked in the description. Go have a gander at the rewards. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook to get regular updates or have a wee chat. Any business you wish to discuss, email me at enthapple.business at gmail.com and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, goodbye.